Welcome to the cutting edge of the global awakening. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence by the military-industrial complex. Well, it looks like the North Tower of the World Trade Center has just completely collapsed. The U.S. dollar's status as the preeminent reserve currency is under attack. This is a mathematical fact. Tens of trillions of dollars are being extracted from the United States of America. You really want the truth? Then just follow the money. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio, a broadcast dedicated to your personal, spiritual, and financial liberty. And now, here's your voice of reason in the midst of global chaos, economist and best-selling author, Jerry Robinson. Ah, uh, greetings, friends. Welcome to Follow the Money Weekly Radio. So glad that you're joining us. Well, gold is on track for its very first annual decline after 12 straight years of gains. Nothing that I know of has gone up 12 straight years the way that gold has, practically uh, moving from a low of around $273 all the way up to approximately $1,900 before coming back down to uh, where it currently is now in the 1200s. And so far, we have seen gold drop in the double digits this year, uh, close to 25%. It's on track, as I said, for its first annual decline in 12 years. And we put out a daily briefing this week on the Sprott Hedge Fund. Those of you not familiar with Eric Sprott, he is a Canadian billionaire who has made a lot of money. Uh, with his hedge fund, and he has been very heavily focused upon gold and the mining sector. But the Wall Street Journal reported this week that the assets managed by Mr. Sprott collapsed from nearly $3 billion back in 2008 down to just $350 million today. Why? What is it that is causing gold to fall? We have an absolute economic crisis on our hands of unbelievable proportions. So how in the world could gold be going down? Now, I'm going to bring on Jay Peroni later on in the program. He is a certified financial planner. He actually manages our PACE investment portfolio. As you know, I am very bullish on gold and silver going forward. Despite this current decline, I fully expect that gold and silver are going to rise dramatically higher in the months and years ahead. However, nothing goes up in a straight line. Absolutely, positively nothing. And of course, we are getting a pullback. After we put out the daily briefing, we had some questions about our intentions. Are we negative on gold? Has our sentiment changed on gold and silver? Absolutely, positively not. Not at all. I totally believe that gold and silver are going to go higher in the future. However, what is so interesting about the piece that the Wall Street Journal ran on Eric Sprott was the fact that he is down, even though gold is only down 25%, he and his hedge fund is down 50% uh, so far this year. Now, how in the world do you go down 50% when gold is only down 25%? Well, it's by being, number one, extra aggressive, perhaps using leverage. I didn't read too far into uh, why or how he was able to lose this much, but I, I also know that he was making some bets on gold mining and silver mining. And as I've told you on the program before here, that is akin to buying lottery tickets. The mining sector is full of landmines. You have to be very, very careful uh, in the mining sector. And we believe that mining is going to rise dramatically uh, in the coming months. In fact, very possibly 2014 will be the year that mining finally bottoms and begins to go higher. But I don't have a crystal ball. And so I haven't been buying mining stocks. I haven't been out there aggressively buying them, trying to catch a falling knife. So you have a billionaire whose hedge fund is down 50%. By the way, John Paulson, who also invests in gold, billionaire hedge fund investor, 63% are his losses this year. Imagine being in his fund and getting your statement in the mail, and it's down 63%. That's a hard hit. It's a hard blow. But hedge funds are becoming increasingly bearish on gold. They have, in fact, so much that they have not been this bearish on gold since 2007. Now, what I want to point out about this is that, yes, gold and silver are down. Gold is down 25%, silver down about 33%. It's been a very tough year for gold and silver. 
However, the way we approach investing, especially when it comes to commodities, is something we call PACE, precious metals, P, agriculture, A, C stands for commodities, and E stands for energy, PACE. And this year, we have only been exposed to precious metals in that portfolio, about 15%. We had more leverage or more exposure, I should say, to energy, about 30%. A little uh, little less to food and agriculture, even a little more or less to commodities. And then we cushion the portfolio with world-dominating dividend-paying stocks, you know, the very big global companies that pay very healthy dividends. And so far for the year, we're up about 16% on the PACE portfolio. Now, we have other portfolios, obviously, that we use as models. But the PACE portfolio, giving you exposure to all of those different areas, is up 16%. This is the power of diversification. Gold goes down 25%. Silver goes down 33%. We own them both in that portfolio, and yet we're up 16%. I get so, I don't know if angry is the word, but I get upset whenever I hear some of our listeners write in or readers, they write in, And they will tell us about how they had put all their money in gold because they had heard someone say that it was going to go to the moon. And that bothers me, not because I I don't like gold and silver. Of course I do. I own it. I'm a buyer. I buy it on the dips. But I would never put all of my money into gold and silver, ever, under any circumstances, under any circumstances, never in a 100 years would I ever put all of my money into any one thing ever. Ever. And remember, the reason that I say this is not because I don't think gold and silver are going to go up. It's because the rules of the game can change. Who makes the rules of the game? Well, the rules are found in the federal income tax code. And so therefore, the rules are made by Congress. That is not good for either one of us because Congress can't put its right foot in front of its left foot. And yet it's making the rules for you and I. And we have to be cautious and aware of this. And therefore, we have to be nimble and be spread out so we're not completely beholden to a simple rule change that can devastate our portfolio. But I really wanted to bring this up today. And in fact, I even brought Jay Peroni on the program. In fact, I'm going to bring him on in just a minute. Because this this story about Eric Sprott and the fact that he's down 50% in his hedge fund with gold and silver it doesn't say anything about gold and silver. It doesn't say anything about gold and silver at all. This is not a negative story on gold and silver, even though perhaps that's what the Wall Street Journal was hoping, because most of the big Wall Street types don't like gold and silver because they represent competition to paper assets. But what this story is about is diversification, in my mind. If gold is down 25%, Silver's down 33%, but you're down 50%, and your primary goal of your hedge fund is to be exposed to precious metals, then there was not a lot of diversification going on in that portfolio. And it's for that very reason that I created the PACE investment portfolio so many years ago, is that I realized that I wanted to have exposure to things that would go up in times of crisis. What things would go up if the dollar collapsed? Well, Gold and silver would definitely go up. So I put precious metals into the portfolio. So I call it, you know, it's a P. And then I said, well, you know what else goes up throughout history is agriculture and food. Food prices go through the, you know, through the roof. Well, then I added the agriculture and the food component to the portfolio. And then I said, well, what else goes up? Well, commodity prices go up. You know, all kinds of commodities, cotton and, and everything that, you know, that's, that's anything that's bought in the U.S. dollar. And so I threw commodities into the portfolio. And then I also said, what else goes up? Well, energy. Energy, because it's priced in U.S. dollars. And so we put all four of those components into the portfolio. And the portfolio did outstanding. Uh, of course, you know, throughout the uh, 2000s, it was a very, very good portfolio and still is outperforming. In fact, it outperformed the S&P 500 last year. But we made a change to it. Just a couple of years ago, first of all, I brought on Jay Peroni, certified financial planner, who you hear on this program every week with his investing idea. And I brought him on as a partner, and I said, listen, here's what I want to do. I want to really uh, take this portfolio and really turn it into something that people can benefit from. Uh, But I have never been schooled in portfolio theory by any stretch of the imagination. And, of course, Jay Peroni had. In fact, he has a master's degree in financial planning. I didn't even know they had that. But, you know, so now he's a CFP and all of this. And so uh, so I said, look, Jay, uh, 
I want to take this portfolio and I want to turn it into something that people can benefit from. And he, of course, used all of his tools that he had available to him. And he put together a portfolio and added, both of us talked about this beforehand, and we realized we needed to add some world-dominating dividend-paying stocks to cushion the blow in the bad years. It would also act potentially as a drag upon the portfolio whenever the crisis was really unfolding. But here's the beauty of diversification is you can change the allocations within the portfolio. So it doesn't have to be, if you know, if you have five things in the portfolio, then you would think, okay, well, there's 20% allocated to all five pieces like of a, of a pie. But that's not the case because what you can do is you can move or adjust those around based upon how they're performing. So if energy happens to be really outperforming, why only be exposed 20% to it? Why not up it to, say, 30% like we are currently? Uh, and if precious metals is not doing very well, why not pull back some of the exposure and take some of that extra money and move it over to an area that is doing well? And so the PACE portfolio I really am excited about. And whenever I saw what had happened to some of these major hedge fund companies and how they're really making major bets on gold and people are going all into gold, and they don't have any kind of diversification, it made me realize that you know we really have something really good here for our folks in the PACE investment portfolio, and I certainly don't talk about it nearly enough, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time on it today. So I want to bring on Jay Peroni to give us an update on how the PACE investment portfolio has done so far in 2013. Let's head over to that right now. All right. Well, those of you who have read our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, know the importance of investment diversification. One of the things that we talk about extensively in the book is the importance of taking your investments and diversifying them across various asset classes. Predominantly, the reason for this is because the rules of the game can change. You know, you may put your money into a particular asset class, and then suddenly the IRS decides to change the tax rules, and it can really harm you. Therefore, it's important for you, if you want to maintain your wealth or grow wealth, to have that money spread out across various asset classes, allowing you to be nimble and to make changes when necessary. And that is how we came up with the idea for something we call PACE, PACE Investment Portfolio. What is the PACE Portfolio? Well, we talked about it extensively here on the program. It stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for Precious metals, P, A stands for agriculture, C stands for commodities, and E stands for energy. Now, those are the four areas that historically have outperformed during times of great economic upheaval, especially when there's a currency crisis. And friends, no doubt about it, we are on the edge of a massive currency crisis, even though the dollar up to this point has had a fairly stable run uh, over the last couple of years. If you look at it on a long-term perspective, it is in a big, confirmed downward trend. And so we fully expect for the dollar to continue to be under pressure in the years ahead. And we believe, because of that, that the PACE portfolio, the PACE strategy, is going to outperform in the long run. So how did it perform this year? Well, the year's almost over. I have Jay Peroni joining me on the line. He's the actual portfolio manager of this PACE investment portfolio. A couple of years ago, I stopped managing it myself. I gave it to, to uh, Jay. And as you know, Jay is a certified financial planner. He manages money for many people around the country. And in fact, when I gave him the PACE portfolio and said, here, would you, I want to entrust this to you. Would you help create this to the best of your ability? Uh, he actually made some tweaks to it. And he really improved it in my uh, estimation. And he added a little hedge around the PACE portfolio with world-dominating dividend-paying stocks, which I thought was a brilliant idea. And since that time, the PACE portfolio has really done well. So I want to talk about how it's done this year. And Jay's joining me on the line to talk about it. Jay, great to have you on the program today. Thanks for having me uh, join. Yeah, the PACE portfolio this year is up a little over 16%. And you say, well, hey, the market's up, you know, 27, 28 percent, whatever it is. And you say it underperformed the market. But really, if you look at the strategy, the goal here is to have some diversification and also have some good returns. And if we look at how precious metals 
have done here in 2013, that's been really one of the weaker links in the overall portfolio and just really gives validity to the fact why you should diversify. If you have all your eggs in one basket and that basket doesn't do well, you can have some pretty serious negative returns. You know, that's a really interesting point. We This week and, of course, on the program today, we've been talking about uh, Eric Sprott and his hedge fund, which was very heavily exposed to precious metals, and the hedge fund is down about 50% this year. And here, Jay, you and I uh, own gold, we own silver, we own mining, and yet we're up. You're telling me we're up 16%. Explain how that diversification makes such a big difference, because we're up 16%, and those who have been only in gold or gold mining are down up to 60. You know, John Paulson's down 63% this year. So we both own gold, but we're up and they're down. Why? Yeah, the big reason is we have five different areas to choose from. We've got precious metals, agriculture, commodity, energy, and then world-dominating companies. And we have the flexibility to over or underweight each of these five categories. And the thing that we do each year is we look at, you know, basically what's the worst that could happen and what's the best that could happen. Now, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're pretty much looking at a scenario where if it goes against you, you can have a pretty negative year. So that's why we will diversify within each of these five areas. And there are times where we're going to overweight an area and times where we underweight it. If we look at precious metals, right now it's 15% of the overall portfolio. And some of these hedge fund managers have not only 100% exposure, but if they're using leverage, they may have 150, maybe even 175% exposure, maybe even higher, depending on how they're structuring their portfolio. We don't use leverage. We use individual positions, and we make bets that we believe have a good risk-to-reward relationship. Yeah, so we're up about 16% for the year, and uh, we partnered up oh a few years ago to bring this uh, to the folks. And because you're actually an investment manager, you manage money for people all over the country, you actually turned this into a portfolio that people could invest into. Our FTM insiders are able to track it in their insider dashboard. Whenever they log in, they're able to see the PACE portfolio. They get real-time alerts anytime you buy or sell anything within the portfolio. But then some people want to take it a step further and say, look, Jay, I don't have time to be you know, tracking all of these different stocks and buying and selling. And so instead, they can just give their money uh, to you and you manage it. Explain how that works. Yeah, we use a, a third party called Folio Institutional. And I always recommend that you look for an advisor that's working with a reputable firm. And we use Folio basically as our platform that allows us to uh, set up what's called a PACE Folio. It has all of the positions in the PACE portfolio in there. And our clients can subscribe to it. And we actively manage it for a fee, of course. You know, there's going to be a fee involved, but no commissions. So it's uh, truly on a fee basis. And uh, we work with clients, like you said, all over the country to help them to incorporate the PACE philosophy into their overall strategy. So overall, the PACE 20 this year, which is composed of 20 stocks made up from all of these different areas, has done about 16%. And you know, it's very healthy. It's not as well as the S&P 500 did, although that really wasn't our target. Our target was to not lose money, and especially with the uh, declining dollar. And I think we definitely achieved our goals this year with the PACE portfolio. So if you'd like to find out more about the PACE portfolio, you can log on to our website, ftmdaily.com, learn more about the PACE portfolio there. You can also reach out to Jay if you'd like to talk to him. He actually can answer very specific questions about how the money is managed and how it all works. Uh, Jay, how can they contact you? Yeah, they can give me a call at 866-594-9919. Again, that's 866 594 9919, or they can email me. It's simply J, J A Y, at J A Y P E R O N I dot com. So J at J Peroni dot com. And uh, we can discuss any questions they might have or potentially set up an appointment to discuss their goals and what they're trying to accomplish and kind of go from there. All right, Jay. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. All right. Have a great day, Jerry. Friends, it's no secret that the U.S. economy is in dire straits, but you don't have to watch this unfold in fear. You can protect yourself and your family with Jerry Robinson's best-selling book, 
now in audiobook format. Get the complete, unabridged, and revised version of Bankruptcy of Our Nation by Jerry Robinson, available in a brand new audiobook. We have had numerous emails pour in from listeners just like you, requesting Jerry's book in audio. Whether you want to listen in the car, at the gym, or on your iPad, we've now got you covered. Get the entire book for only $24.95. That's right, over 12 hours of Jerry Robinson's economic and financial education and practical strategies for only $24.95. Inside the audiobook, you'll hear 21 income streams you can create both now and in retirement, specific ways to inflation-proof your investment portfolio using our PACE philosophy, and the five levels of financial freedom that Jerry has personally used to build true wealth. Friends, you cannot afford to miss out on this information. Get Jerry Robinson's brand new audiobook, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, right now at ftmdaily.com forward slash bankruptcy. That's ftmdaily.com forward slash bankruptcy. Hi friends, Jerry Robinson here. Many of you know that I have been running several successful online businesses for years. And one of the things that I like about doing business online is that it's cheap. In fact, anyone can get started simply by purchasing a domain name and a web hosting plan. But how exactly do you get started? Well, just go where I go, dirtcheapwebhosting.net. That's right, dirtcheapwebhosting.net. It does not matter what you're looking for because they have it all. Domain names as low as one dollar and 99 cents web hosting plans as low as three dollars and 99 cents per month and you can even start your own online store for as little as nine dollars and 99 cents per month and if you need help building your own website just use their free design wizard and you can be up and running in no time with your very own beautifully designed website friends it's time to get online start a blog start an online business start something log on now to dirtcheapwebhosting.net and get your own website set up right now for just a few dollars per month dirtcheapwebhosting.net everything you need to get started online only cheaper with this week's trigger trade report i'm jennifer robinson well, it was an interesting week in our trigger trading as the markets were very skittish this week. We have 10 stocks in play right now in the markets, including ticker symbol FB. That's Facebook, which is currently up 2.2% for us. Ticker symbol DE, which is up 1.8%. Ticker symbol CELG, up 6% and ticker symbol BR, up 5.6%. We also have ticker symbol SKM, which is right now down for us about 1.7%. We also still have six trades still awaiting Jerry's trigger price. Now we've gotten several emails from our FTM insiders saying that they do not have time to trade these stocks on a daily or weekly basis. And they are curious to know how would these stocks perform if they just bought and held them? Well, we have January 2013's report right now. Our stock picks during January of this last year included ticker symbol VGCP. Now, if you would have bought that on the day that we announced it as a trigger trade and held it until now, you would be up 66%. We also called ticker symbol RGR, which is up 54% year to date. Ticker symbol NOV, which is up 11%. Ticker symbol ALKS, up 91%. Ticker symbol GEVA, which is up 35%. Ticker symbol VR, up 10.5%. And ticker symbol FEIC, up 50% for the year. These seven stocks alone have an average year-to-date return of 45.5%. Now these are stock ideas that we announced to all of our FTM insiders back in January this year. So if you are an FTM insider and you're wondering what these stocks would perform like if you just bought and held them, well these are how the January ideas performed throughout the year. So hopefully that information is helpful to you. Trigger Trading is a system that we provide all of our FTM insiders in which Jerry Robinson gives one trading idea every single day of the market open, complete with trigger price, stop loss price, commentaries, and daily status updates. If you would like to learn more, you can visit us at ftmdaily.com forward slash trigger trade.
That's ftmdaily.com forward slash trigger trade. Follow the Money Weekly presents your precious metals market update. Here's Tom Cloud. Well, things have, have unfolded uh, very close to what we talked about and what Jerry put out in his um, newsletter on Tuesday is we expected the price to pop as short covering uh, people buying the metals to deliver for their profits on their short contracts. And certainly it probably went up even higher than most of us anticipated to see silver jump all the way uh, over a dollar, uh, about a dollar and a half total over a short period of time. So we're seeing that. And ordinarily when you see uh, short covering push the price up, the people that are covering their shorts are not going back into them when they expire next week. So we're very encouraged by that. And literally you could see silver go from 2050 to 22, 23, 24, if not by the end of this year, early next year. So we're seeing a lot of silver interest uh, now with the price back above 20. So we feel very good about that. And certainly they could try one last time to push the price down before next Thursday, but it's highly unlikely. We've seen the same type thing in gold, and we've seen it get to uh, up into the 1260s and clear that 1250 hurdle and hopefully it'll stay. I still believe with all my heart the, the 1180 we saw back in June will be the low that we may see the rest of our life. And uh, So gold also right now is a very, very good uh, buy situation. And all the fundamentals we've talked about with China going into the commercial end of the business and selling to central banks and others uh, is very, very, very bullish. And the Singapore laws that will allow storage with uh, confidentiality, which uh, every country is folded into the United States. But with James Sinclair, the head of the uh, mines over there in the uh, cartels, I think you can be assured that Singapore will end up being the major haven for storage in the coming uh, decade. And that will probably start in full earnest in the first or second quarter of the coming year. So these are all very big fundamental issues that are going to help drive uh, gold and, and silver. And we've seen the dollar come down below 80 now, which is getting very scary. We're still looking for a break. If it gets below 78, you're going to see gold and silver explode. One other fundamental issue that uh, some of our momentum traders, we've got a buy signal on, is the ratio of gold to silver has gotten to 62 to 1 with gold being 62 times more valuable than silver. And we're seeing uh, people move to silver uh, from gold just for the momentum buy as they think it'll swing back to the 50 to 55 range. And if we do get back to a 50 ratio in uh, 2014 that almost everyone is expecting, if gold were to only go back to 1665, where it started the year this year from where it is right now, that would be about a uh, 30% gain. But if the ratio, if gold got back to 1665 and silver went to a 51 ratio, it would be at 3330, and that would be over a 50% profit. So the profit would be double silver, uh, price for silver than it would gold if these momentum traders are right and we get back to that ratio in 2014, which I think is a very, very good possibility that that will happen. So if you're into momentum trading, uh, we can talk about that and leaving the silver on deposit uh, in our account in Dallas and getting a certificate, and then when you're ready to sell it, you just sign the certificate. So we, anybody that wants to discuss that, uh, I'll be happy to go over in detail with you on that. Uh, we continue to hear from every corner on earth that palladium uh, could be the top metal next year for the third straight year. Uh, a lot of our buying the last two weeks has been in palladium by our clients. If you don't have any palladium, I would strongly urge you. I think it's got the least downside of any metal and uh, but maybe not as much upside as silver over the next three-year period. 
but certainly a very strong upside potential. So I thought I'd be looking at that also. So hopefully that will give you a good update for the week. If you need to talk to me, I can be reached at 800-247-2812. That's 800-247-2812. If you're not getting our email blast and special offers, um, uh, you can go to ftmdaily.com and hit the precious metals button or FTM Daily front slash gold and you can sign up for our free uh, distribution list. We don't share it with anyone. It's completely confidential, and if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. But hopefully uh, that's what you'll do because I feel we can help educate you a lot. And I think the next three years with Obama as president and the amount of money that's being created this year out of thin air, over 20% worldwide uh, at, at a time, the amount of gold is probably going to go up one and a half percent, or the estimates for 2013. So you can see if you create 20 times more uh, paper money than you do real money, which is gold, there's no doubt down the road there's going to be a big adjustment to the upside. It may take, and it has taken longer than we expected, but it will happen. So with this week's precious metals market update. This is Tom Cloud signing out. Hey, friends, this is Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly. Recently, we have been receiving many emails from our listeners commenting on the great help they're getting from our precious metals expert, Tom Cloud. Gold and silver are excellent hedges against the growing threat of coming U.S. inflation. Who's your gold guy? Make it Tom Cloud. With over 30 years' experience with precious metals, Tom will answer all of your questions. Don't buy your gold and silver through some call center and pay inflated prices. Call my good friend Tom Cloud and speak directly with him and get all of your questions answered. For a limited time, Tom is offering free shipping and insurance on every gold and silver purchase made by our listeners. Call 800 247 2812. And when you do, tell him that Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly sent you. And he'll throw in that free shipping and insurance on your entire order. Call your gold guy, Tom Cloud, right now for the very best deals on gold and silver coins. 800-247-2812. That is 800-247-2812. One of the things that we like to invest in here at Follow the Money is real estate. We like real estate, especially rental real estate for cash flow purposes and tax benefits. Recently, I caught up with my good friend and veteran real estate investor, Cynthia Goda. Cynthia has invested all over the country. And when I asked her what she looks for in a potential rental property, here is what she said. Well, you know, you really want to look for a location first when you're looking at rental properties. You want to make sure you're in an area where renters want to be. And if you want high-quality renters, you really want to make sure you're in a high-quality neighborhood. You know, you also want to make sure you know the school districts. Uh, families with children are definitely interested in the schools. And I also look at the neighborhood. You know, is there pride of ownership? You know, I had one investor um, that bought up several really inexpensive properties, but they were actually in really poor neighborhoods, and her renters were disasters. You know, just an FYI, just keep in mind uh, what, what you're buying there. The second thing I look for is I like a property with good bones, uh, something that can be fixed up uh, but not a money pit. So you definitely don't want something that has structural issues, or at least know that up front so you put that in the price that you pay. You know, in my area, I personal, personally like um, properties that have a lock-off or a secondary entrance or something that can be made into a little apartment or could be rented separately. Um, sometimes people renting a home, they may have their, you know, mother-in-law living with them and they want to have their own separate space. Uh, but still be in the same home. So these are really big in my area, and so that's what I look for, Jerry. Yeah, that's all good stuff. Now, if you're interested in hearing more of what Cynthia has to say about investing in real estate, including five steps to finding good tenants and 
how to find properties with owners in crisis, or how to buy foreclosures, simply become an FTM Insider. All of this information is now available in our Income University. You have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in education. And that is what the Income University is all about, teaching you how to make money, how to become a better investor, and how to create multiple streams of income. Go over to ftmdaily.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for as little as $19 per month and get access to all of our premium information. Well, somewhere beneath Yellowstone National Park sits a super volcano that scientists are now saying is larger than they had expected. And in fact, it's large enough to wipe out the entire United States. This according to a team of scientists from the University of Utah and appearing in the Australian news source and also the New York Post written by James Seidel, the title Beneath Yellowstone, a volcano that could wipe out the United States. And I uh, let's read a little bit of this to you because I find it very interesting. Yellowstone National Park is pristine wilderness, it says, full of scenic landscape, iconic hot pools and geysers that attract tens of thousands of visitors every year. But it's what lies beneath that has scientists scurrying. We've long known that Yellowstone is merely the skin on top of a supervolcano, a giant pool of magma sitting just under the Earth's surface. Exactly how giant has been the subject of much speculation until now. A team from the University of Utah have told the American Geophysical Union fall meeting in San Francisco that Yellowstone's magma chamber is two and a half times larger than than previously thought. It is an underground cavern measuring some 55 miles by 20 miles and containing between 125 and 185 billion cubic miles of molten rock. And I'm still quoting the story, if it blows, it will wipe out America and have enormous impacts on the rest of the world. The university researchers described their discovery as, quote, astounding. Professor Bob Smith told the BBC, we have been working there for a long time and we've always thought that it would be bigger but this finding is astounding and the story goes on and talks about a few other things uh, about what they had to say along with some history and then it finally concludes and it says so what would happen if yellowstone was to erupt something close to armageddon soil samples reveal that the last time it happened the whole of north america was smothered by ash the lava flow was almost as great The streams of molten rock were hundreds of miles long and miles thick. Such was the extent of the smoke and debris cloud generated by the eruption that the climate of the entire world was affected for several centuries. So this new research basically says you cannot move away from that supervolcano. I have heard all kinds of uh, things over the years about the spread or the potential spread of that supervolcano sitting underneath Yellowstone National Park. And now... We have this report from the University of Utah telling us that there's nowhere to hide on this continent. In fact, even the world will be impacted by the eruption of this supervolcano. Now, when will it happen? Oh, well, who knows? Uh, According to some scientists, they say it could be tens of thousands of years before it erupts again. But there have been some... A lot of tremors going on up there. Something to keep your eyes on. I think I'll just put it that way. Something to keep your eyes on. Something to watch. It's not really much you can do about it, to be honest. I guess it does give another reason, though, for those of you who've been thinking about moving out of the country, or those who already have, another reason to move. Uh, Maybe. It's not likely it's going to happen any time in our lifetimes, but... You know, you just never know. Uh, There was one other story I want to leave you with before we bring our show to a conclusion, and that is to keep your eyes on the Gulf Nations. The Gulf Nations this week held their big GCC meeting. It's an annual meeting, the Gulf Cooperation Council. They get together every year, and they try to coordinate their different states uh, in unison. And for a long time, they have been very dependent upon the United States for security. This is so, the whole petrodollar arrangement that has been existing you know, now since the 1970s. Actually, it goes back to the 40s, but the modern form that we see today was uh, born in the 70s. Well, 
the Gulf nations are moving very rapidly towards a single currency, a single central bank. And these six nations that make up the GCC are Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and the uh, UAE, along with Saudi Arabia. And what they're doing is, is they're trying to integrate just like the European Union. Now, Oman has a lot of ties with Iran, and so there have been some scuttling and differences between the GCC and Oman over the handling of Iran. Uh, as well as the U UAE, they're not at all excited about a currency union. However, we're keeping our eyes on this. I'm not going to go as far to say that we're going to see a single currency in the Gulf nations anytime in the next couple of months. But I believe 2014 could be a very big year for the Gulf nations as they may announce uh, the creation of a single currency. And it could be backed by gold. It could be backed by the yuan. It could be backed by the euro. And this, of course, will be the undoing of the petrodollar system. So obviously all eyes on the Gulf Union to see if this will materialize anytime soon. Well, friends, that's the end of our program. Thank you so much for choosing to allow me into your life each and every week. It is an honor and a privilege to be a part of yours as well. And as always, I leave you with this final word, and it's simply this. Imagine for a moment that you cannot fail. What could you accomplish if you knew that you cannot fail? Forget all of the reasons that it won't work and believe the one reason that it will. When your desire for success becomes greater than your fear of failure, you will succeed. Just something to think about. Remember, friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and I'll see you right back here next weekend. God bless. All of the information contained on Follow the Money Weekly Radio is strictly for informational and educational purposes. The views and opinions of all guests, including our sponsors Tom Cloud and Jay Peroni, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of Jerry Robinson, FTMDaily.com, and or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry and Jennifer Robinson do hold their insurance licenses and may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcasts podcast or by radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.